Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Today is Tuesday, November 15th. Uh, we will start by introducing you to your City Council. Council members Kylie. Here. Neitzert. Rolfing. Here. Selberg. Here. Starr. Staley. Erickson. Here. Erpenbach. Here. Thanks, Councillors, for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, we're very, very pleased to have Pastor Carmen Van Skoik uh, from Celebrate Community Church one of the fastest growing churches in all of Sioux Falls and yes, in South Dakota. So Pastor Carmen, thanks for being here. Really appreciate what you're doing. We would ask you to stand for pastor's invocation and then remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Pastor Carmen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this evening we Thank you that as citizens of this great country, we have the privilege of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We thank you for our country and pray that you would give wisdom and courage to those in our federal government, that they would work together in the spirit of cooperation for what is best for us as a nation. With the events of last week and the friction we are experiencing as a nation, I ask that you would help us achieve a new sense of unity. God, help us come together as one, working together for those things that truly are most important. Tonight, we specifically come to you on behalf of the people of Sioux Falls, that you would look favorably upon those who have gathered here in this room, specifically those in leadership and governing positions. I pray for our mayor, Mike Huther, that you would bless him and his leadership. I pray for your favor upon him as he leads our city. I pray the same for Christine, Michelle, Rick, Greg, Rex, Marshall, Pat, and Teresa. Collectively, I ask that you give them wisdom and courage to do what is both right and fair. Bless each of them as they graciously serve the people of Sioux Falls. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stacy, thank welcome. Please come forward. Stacy, welcome. Would you mind, before I get started, just introduce yourself to the people of Sioux Falls and let folks know what you do. Hi, my name is, hi, <laughs> sorry. My name is Stacy Teason. I'm the coordinator for the Homeless Advisory Board. The Homeless Advisory Board is a joint city county board put together to work to end homelessness in the city of Sioux Falls. And Stacy, with that in mind, I do have a proclamation I'd like to read on the city's behalf, whereas, Every night in the city of Sioux Falls there are homeless children, women, and men in need of shelter and supportive services. They become homeless because of domestic violence, poverty, untreated mental health issues, medical issues, relationship strain, having served in active combat, and a combination of factors and so much more. Whereas homeless families and individuals lack a permanent, safe, and a nighttime residence. They live in shelters, transitional living facilities, vehicles, outdoors, in places not meant for human habitation, with strangers they just met, or at an imminent risk of being displaced from their residence. Whereas, hundreds of individuals in Sioux Falls have been identified as homeless, including more than 1,100 unduplicated individuals so far this year who have utilized the services of our newest shelter the Bishop Dudley Hospitality House. Whereas the number of children identified in, as homeless in Sioux Falls has increased substantially over the last decade, including more than 490 children identified by the Sioux Falls School District so far this year, that's 2016-17 school year. Whereas the number of children receiving weekend food backpacks is at 3,400 students and more than 10,000 students are receiving free or reduced meals in the Sioux Falls School District. Whereas preventing and ending homelessness and hunger 
is essential to the stability of families, the growth and vitality of businesses, and the Sioux Falls community as a whole. Or as there are many organizations and faith-based entities committed <coughs> to sheltering and providing supportive services as well as meals and food supplies to those in need. Striving to ensure that the steps they are taking to end homelessness and hunger are done efficiently and effectively by working collaboratively to avoid duplication of services. Now, therefore, I, Mike Huther, a mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim November 2016 as Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Month in the city of Sioux Falls and encourage all members to recognize the continued and increasing need for services for the homeless and hungry in Sioux Falls and to support those organizations working to meet those needs. Stacy, thank you for all that you do. I know there's others here in the, uh, uh, in the uh, chambers tonight that are also doing great things to, to help this cause. So please, let's give them a round of applause and thank them for their efforts. Good evening, counselors. Good evening, people in the audience. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak with you this evening. As the holiday season is about to commence with amazing winter wonderland at Falls Park, my very favorite thing, and the, the 25th annual Parade of Lights downtown next week, it seems fitting to talk about a question that was posed as a table topic conversation during a meeting I attended this noon. Is seeing believing or is believing seeing? Seems a bit challenging for a less than two minute response, especially if you want to talk religion or even Santa Claus. What if we want, need to talk about the issues of hunger and homelessness in our community? Do we need to see the numbers? Do we need to see the people waiting in line for hours to be served? Do we need to see these statistics before you, before you to understand that we have real problems without easy solutions in our community? The thing about statistics is that they are numbers on a piece of paper. They don't do justice or paint the true story of a family or an individual who's experienced extreme trauma, pain, loss, who is in the throes of addiction, or who has an untreated mental illness. It doesn't show you what it feels like to be all alone, to have no support system, to have family that's given up on you, or to never have been there for you to begin with, or for you to have given up on you and all your future potential. Tonight, here are the latest 2016 statistics from agencies providing services to those most in need. The numbers are astonishing in many regards. 500 kids lacking a permanent safe place to call home, identified in just the first two months of the school year. 200 people with severe mental illness, half of whom are treating it with alcohol, methamphetamines, or other substances through just Southeastern's identification process for their homeless outreach program. An 18% increase in the number of people served at Children's Inn through domestic violence issues. Single moms most in need of affordable housing that is rapidly becoming unobtainable. unobtainable. 1,250 unduplicated people receiving shelter at the Bishop Dudley. People with long-term needs that require more than a Band-Aid. I ask that we take some time to reflect on this and come together as a community to focus on our resources, our talents, and our innate need to be better and find collaborative solutions that address these needs. A favorite quote of mine that hangs on my office wall reflects the question asked above. The miracle of your mind isn't that you can see the world as it is, it's that you can see the world as it isn't. Maybe just for today, we imagine the possibilities and the what ifs. I thank you for your time, I thank you for your service, and I welcome any questions. Councilors, thank you very much. And now our consent agenda. Any motions or changes to that? Move approval, Rolfing. Second, Kylie. Council Chair Rolfing has made a motion to approve our consent agenda tonight. Seconded by uh, Councilor Vice Chair Kylie. If there's no discussion, a roll call, please. Council members Kylie. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. Yes. That has passed five to zero. Thank you, Council. Our regular agenda. Any changes to that? Move to approve, Erpenbach. 
Second, Selberg. Councilor Box made a motion to approve our regular agenda tonight. Second by Councilor Selberg. Again, if no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Council members Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That has also passed 5 to 0. Thank you. Folks, welcome to tonight's meeting. Uh, we're very, very thankful to have you here. This is a great opportunity for you to engage the council really on any topic that you want. Uh, as long as it's not a second reading that comes up later, then we'd ask you to wait till then. But really, just come forward, uh, introduce yourself to the people of our city, and if you could keep your comments to five minutes or less, uh, the council would appreciate that. Would anybody in, be interested? Welcome. Dear Bruce Arts Sioux Falls, as I hear, we have a lot of homeless people, uh, and Stacy Teason was talking about it. I've been out on the streets today, especially on Duluth Avenue, handling um, some low-income apartments. Prairie Heights, um, Pat Costello owns them. We have a lot of criminal activity happen there. Um, in that lower section that we're having all this crime, we are enabling the people to get a job. We are enabling them to work for what they got. We have people on Section 8 that are in these buildings that are subleasing to other people, prostituting, drug dealing, and I have a former gang member that is going to talk to the police department on Thursday on the stuff that is happening on Duluth Avenue. I have talked to the Sioux Falls Housing. Everything is about the poor people and the poverty people here, and I get this. I really do. But we have 3,000 people coming into Sioux Falls to get the resources every every year. The stress level in the police department, there were seven police officers swarming on Duluth Avenue to keep the violence down today. That, 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 I mean, seven police officers, that's a lot of resources here. So I think that we need to help the people get up on their feet and get a job, but stop helping them and giving them assistance for years to come. This is, this is only a temporary assistance here. This is not um, assistance that you can get until the day you die. The problems that we have in Duluth is the people that are low income, that want to live off of Section 8, don't get a job, and rather have quick money by selling drugs. And this is what I found out today on, on, on this issue. I'd be back over there tomorrow talking to these gangs that are out there on Duluth Avenue. But these are all Section 8 people, low poverty people, getting assistance from the county and the city here. Thank you, Sierra. Did anybody else welcome? Welcome. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Mark Blackburn. <clears throat> I am uh, the president of a new, newly formed nonprofit organization called Establishing Sustainable Connections, um, acronym ESC for short, ESCAPE. And uh, we've been, we're, we're newly founded in this city, but what we do is we really try to bring empowerment to our people uh, in the city of Sioux Falls in terms of collaboration, educational insight, and awareness to build the gaps that we have in our city. And so um, we uh, normally put together monthly events and Thursday we have a, a phenomenal event. I mean, if, if you could think about what happened in the past of the week, uh, we have a lot of um, turmoil from the president elect and certain things and a lot of people in different other cities, Los Angeles being one of my hometowns of people protesting. So again, as I'm here living in Sioux Falls, we're gonna to try to do all we can to bring education in, uh, to our people here. And so what's on the screen there now, we just have a conversation on intercultural racism. And we're gonna talk about intracultural racism, meaning that racism between one person, their one culture. And so Shades of Blackness is a, is a, is a nice uh, way of putting it, but we're dealing with colorism. And for those of you who don't know what colorism is, it's been enrooted from slavery, um, and it's been a, a deeply enrooted, ingrained ideology that we really want to dispel some of the stigmas and stereotypes. So this is an open invitation for anybody who wants to come. We're having it Thursday at the bakery, lower level, Thursday, 6 o'clock is the social. 6.30 to 8 p.m. will be the event. 
And so we welcome any and everyone who wants to learn more about this um, very, very uh, ingrained intercultural racism that we have uh, in many communities, but especially the black community. So thank you very much. Uh, hopefully we'll see you all there. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be here for a minute. Thank you. Mark, thank you as well. Appreciate it. Did anybody else want to engage the council? Well, thank you all for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Item 14. Item 14 is new 2017 retail wine license for Libation Station LLC, Libation Station 2904 West Russell Street, CUP not required. Item 15 is new 2016-17 retail malt beverage license for Libation Station LLC, Libation Station 2904 West Russell Street, CUP not required. Item 16 is new 2016-17 retail malt beverage license for Commonwealth Gaming and Holdings Company, Deuces Casino 6.5, 510 South Valley View Road, Suite 2, CUP not required. Item 17 is request to include video lottery terminals with the new 2016-17 retail malt beverage license for Commonwealth Gaming and Holdings, Deuces Casino 6.5, 510 South Valley View Road, Suite 2. Item 18 is transfer of 2016 retail liquor license, including video lottery terminals and Sunday sales certificate from KBJ Gaming Incorporated, Deuces Casino, 4709 East 26th Street, to Commonwealth Gaming and Holdings Company, Deuces Casino 7, 4709 East 26th Street, CUP not required. Item 19 is renewal of 2017 retail liquor license for Commonwealth Gaming and Holdings Company, Deuces Casino 7, 4709 East 26th Street. Item 20 is transfer of 2016-17 retail malt beverage license, including video lottery terminals from Harms Oil Company, Friendly's Fuel Stop, 3700 North Potsdam Avenue, Suite 300, to CC and F Retail Incorporated, Friendly's Fuel Stop, 3700 North Potsdam Avenue, Suite 300. Item 21 is transfer of 2016-17 package malt beverage license from Harms Oil Company, Friendly's Fuel Stop, 3700 North Potsdam Avenue, Suite 100, to CCNF Retail Incorporated, Friendly's Fuel Stop, 3700 North Potsdam Avenue, Suite 100. Item 22 is a transfer of 2016 retail wine license from BYG SF LLC Backyard Grill Phillips, 323 South Phillips Avenue, Apartment B, to BYG Phillips Backyard Grill Phillips, 323 South Phillips Avenue, Apartment B. <coughs> Item 23 is renewal of 2017 retail wine license for BYG Phillips Backyard Grill Phillips, 323 South Phillips Avenue, Apartment B. And item 24 is a special one-day liquor license request for Hy-Vee Incorporated at all occasions by Hy-Vee to be operated at Raven Industries 205 East 6th Street for a Christmas party on December 8, 2016. Good evening, Jamie Palmer with licensing. Items 14 and 15 are requests um, for new licenses at a, a venue that would like to hold dinners um, to teach people how to pair wines and different beverages with um, different meals. Item 16 um, is a new license or malt beverage request for a new casino. Item 17 is the request for video lotteries to accompany that. Item 18 is a transfer due to, to a change in ownership. And item 19 is the renewal for that license. Items 20 and 21 are transfers due to a change in ownership. And 22 is just a um, transfer due to a name change. And the accompanying renewal is item 23 and a special one day request. Thank you, Jamie. Councilors. Move to approve, Erickson. Second, Kylie. Councilor Erickson has made a motion to approve these items. Thank you. Second by Councilor Kylie. Uh, if there, Council um, Vice Chair Kylie, if there's not a um, any discussion, a roll call, please. Council members Kylie. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. Yes. Councilor, that is passed five to zero. Thank you. Item twenty five. Item 25 is a first reading. Set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, December 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 3009 South Marion Road from the RS Single Family Residential Suburban District to the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District, petition number 5807, 2016, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 7 to 0. Uh, Jason Bieber representing Planning and Building Services. Uh, this is an application um, by Tom Monin, who is also the owner of the property. 
Uh, it is located at the 3009 South uh, Marion Road. Uh, it's just west of South Marion and north of West 41st Street. It's roughly 1.8 acres. You can see there's two existing uh, single family homes on the property. Uh, the purpose of this application is to combine uh, the proposed 1.8 acres with the existing 2.96 acres of RD1 zoning to the west. Um, and then the applicant is looking to construct a uh, twin home development with roughly 17 lots on it. Jason, thank you. Councilors, any questions of Jason or comments? Yes, Councilor Erickson. I just have a question in regards to the neighborhood meetings. If there's any feedback as, you know, it's obviously a higher density um, in some of the neighborhoods there. So just curious if there's any feedback from. We did have some uh, neighbors come to the Planning Commission meeting. Um, none of them spoke in for it or against it. And I know the applicant did speak with them out in the hallway afterwards. Okay. Words. Um, so we may have some people come to the second reading. I think it's important to note that, as you can kind of see by this, the, the west, two thirds of it is already zoned twin homes. So it's really just adding that uh, front one third to, for the development. Makes sense. Thank you. I move to approve. Thank you, Councillor. For the second reading, December 6th. Yes, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, second. And so seconded by Councillor Chair Rolfing. If no discussion, uh, uh, Councillor Erpenbach. Yes, One no, quick, take your time. Jason, can I see the slide that is like the overhead view with the trees and stuff? Is this the one you're looking for? Yeah. Is there's, that what it looks like now? Yeah, there's two existing houses. The owners, um, Tom Monin actually live in the house on the north. Uh, the house to the south is, I guess, pretty dilapidated. Um, so their plan is to demolish both those houses and then they will be moving out to the country and to develop then this twin home development. Very good, thank you. Councilors, I roll call vote, please. Council members Kiley? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That is passed five to zero. Thank you. Item 26. Item 26 is to set a date of hearing and second reading for Tuesday, December 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property at 909 North Kiwanis <coughs> Avenue from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban District to the O Office District, petition number 5818-2016, and amending the official zoning map of the city of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval seven to zero. Uh, the applicant and owner here is Ron uh, Steenbolt uh, with Ron's Garage. Uh, it's at that southwest corner of West Madison Street and North Kiwanis Avenue. Uh, it's roughly 0.1 acres in size and it's located just south of the existing Ron Garage Auto Repair Shop. Uh, the purpose of this specific rezoning is to construct an accessory parking lot uh, for Ron's Garage to the south. Um, and then provide uh, the required buffer yards on the south and west sides. Jason, thank you. Councilors, any comments, uh, motions? Move to approve, Erpenbach. Second. Move to set the date of hearing, sorry. Thank you. Councilor Erpenbach has done that and seconded by Councilor Erickson. Uh, if no discussion on Rokovo, please. Council members Kiley? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That has passed five to zero. Item 27. Item 27 is a resolution authorizing an amendment to the 2005 amended and restated commitment agreement by and between Lewis and Clark Rural Water System and the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Trent. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Trent Lubers with the Office of Public Works and also uh, uh, Board Director for the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System. Tonight we'll be presenting a minor amendment to the agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System regarding the usage of the Capital Reserve Fund. The City of Sioux Falls has been a member of the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System since the very beginning, starting in 1990. And we, start, and we received water, or started receiving water from the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System in 2012. We made a significant investment, including leveraging $70 million worth of bonds uh, to pre-purchase and uh, uh, get the construction started for the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System. Uh, it taps into the Missouri River, uh, probably one of the most reliable and clean water sources in our region, if not the country. And it up to uh, this date today has provided 52% of the water for the city of Sioux Falls this year. Uh, so it's a significant water supply for us. Lewis and Clark uh, is a board that consists of 20 members, uh, uh, rural water systems and municipalities from the states of Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota. Each one of those members has an agreement called the Amended Reinstated and Commitment Agreement. We call it the ARCA. The ARCA is really a governance document that guides uh, how we govern the organization, how we build connection points, uh, the establishment of reserve funds, uh, those types of things. 
the, the uh, agreement actually establishes three reserve funds. It establishes a reserve fund for operation and maintenance. It establishes a capital reserve fund, and it also uh, establishes a, a straight operations reserve. By agreement, <clears throat> the money in these funds cannot be moved. Once they're placed uh, in the funds, they can't be moved from fund to fund. And so they're very restricted and limited by agreement on how they can be used. For example, the capital reserve fund cannot be used. It cannot pull money out of that to uh, construct base system. It can't be used to increase capacity in the system. And it really can't be used for repair and replacement functions, such as repairing a pump or repairing a motor on a pump, those types of things that wear out. That's what you would use the repair and replacement fund for. The capital fund also has a restriction on when it can be used. Um, the when, uh, by agreement, says after completion of construction of the system. And what that means for Lewis and Clark is the first piece of infrastructure went in the ground in 2003. And it's conceivable that it's going to take many more years to construct the Lewis and Clark regional water system. And so there's going to be a need on this capital reserve fund, or there's conceivably going to be a need on this capital reserve fund for some of that original infrastructure before the system is complete. So what the Lewis and Clark Board is recommending is that we remove those seven words and only those seven words from that part of the capital reserve fund that limits when it can be used, not how it can be used or what it can be spent on, so that when those items come up to replace a roof or to replace a section of pipe or that type of thing, that we can pull money out of the capital reserve fund and do that as opposed to using other funding mechanisms. We've reviewed this with the Sioux Falls legal team, and they're uh, supporting this item. They believe that it provides the necessary protections and doesn't allow the fund to be used in any way that it wasn't intended to in the original ARCA. By the ARCA amendment, the only way an amendment to the ARCA can work is if all 20 members unanimously approve that amendment. Of the 20 members, 19 to date have approved. Sioux Falls is here to ask for your support uh, to approve this amendment, and uh, we recommend your approval. I'm here to answer any questions. Tom, thank you. Before I go to the council, is there anybody in the audience who wanted to speak to this resolution? Councilors? Councilor Erbenbach. Trent, just talk to us again. I, I realize that it's there's so many variables involved in funding Lewis and Clark, but can you talk to us just in general? What, what do we think is going to happen with Lewis and Clark? Will it be completed? How will it be completed? Is Sioux Falls going to be on the hook for any more money? Can you just kind of give us in a nutshell sort of that comfort zone that we sure. sometimes kind of lose with Lewis and Clark? There's a lot of questions there. I'll try to, um, no, I'll, I'll try to answer them one at a time. So how it's being completed today in the absence of federal funding? And federal funding has, uh, uh, after... Um, uh, after some of the stimulus money came in, federal funding kind of uh, dwindled off. And so um, Lewis and Clark has made an appeal to the states uh, to, to uh, put some money in. The state of South Dakota has advanced $8.7 million uh, to actually wheel water through a couple of rural water systems and get the city of Madison connected. Um, and the uh, state of Minnesota has committed significant resources, uh, uh, well over $40 million, to get all the pieces in Minnesota connected all the way to Worthington. The way that works is uh, those states are advancing funding, and then as federal funding comes in, the states will get paid back. Um, so, so that's how it's being constructed today. Uh, we're also working uh, with our tri-state delegation to increase our funding. Uh, they've um, worked to increase the funding beyond uh, what the federal funding has been. Um, the other part of your question, as far as whether Sioux Falls is, is on the hook, uh, we prepaid uh, what our share is, uh, and we prepaid to get our, our connection and our base system costs. As the system is constructed and those costs get indexed going forward, there is what's called a final true-up. <clears throat> so at the end of the overall uh, project, uh, there may be some costs, cost overruns, that type of thing. And so Sioux Falls and every other member will be responsible for uh, what we call a pro rata share, our share of water and those costs and what that true-up will be. And then Sioux Falls actually has some costs related to some wells that will get constructed. So there's some minor costs that uh, we showed you out in our uh, uh, rate model out at the end uh, to reflect what that final true-up would be and in, in, in the cost on our customers. Um, uh, we have uh, a new administration in place, and I don't know what that means for federal funding. Uh, Minnesota uh, legislature is going to take up a bonding bill to uh, complete the system and the connection to uh, the state of uh, or to the uh, city of Worthington. After that, uh, the the goal is going to be to get the connection or the line from the city of Beersford to the Iowa state line, 
And then uh, the same ask will come from the Iowa State Legislature. So as that federal funding comes in, as all those members are connected, that federal funding will be used uh, to repay the states and the advances to the states of South Dakota, Minnesota, and hopefully Iowa someday. Well, and I think, uh, you know, in a nutshell, I mean, I, I think what we have to understand is that, yeah, it was, it started as a federal, federally funded project and it has become by necessity a real collaborative process between a couple of states and several counties and municipalities, all those kinds of things. It's, it's an interesting project to watch and if you've looked at the entire history of it, you know that it's remarkable that it's where it's at and, and if we were to not approve this, would really, it, it, it's a disservice to what something that has become an amazing project out of really nothing. There was a point where we didn't know if we were gonna get water out of that. And it's, it's remarkable that we're where we're at, so. I mean, I realize we're history lesson, but I think it's important that, that we understand where, we, where we've been and where we're headed with this. So Thank thanks you. for your work. I would move approval. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Councilor, I appreciate Second Rolfing. Thank you, Council Chair. I appreciate it. Councilor, Vice Chair Kelly. Just real quick point of clarification. 19 out of 20 have already approved this amendment. Correct. 19 out of 20. We are the last. We are the last. So <laughs> all right, we're, we're, we're holding it up. Here we go. Thank a, you. A roll call vote, please. Council members Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Councilor Zed has passed 5 to 0. Thank you. Item 28. Item 28 is a resolution advising and giving consent to the appointment of members to certain citizen boards, those being the Plumbing Board of Appeals and Exam Examiners, Travis Hartland and Paul Wrench. Councilor, any comments on these two folks? Are any of them here by chance? Uh, would Travis or Paul be here tonight? Councilor, no. You approve? Thank you, Councilor. Second, Urban Thank you, Councilor. I appreciate that. Uh, a roll call vote, please. Council members Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. That has passed 5 to 0. Uh, Council, I do know we have some students in the uh, uh, in the chambers tonight. Thank you for being here, uh, folks. We appreciate it. Uh, they are from Augie, but they didn't want to be recognized, so we're not going to cheer for them. <laughs> But we do thank you for being here. And uh, folks, welcome. Welcome. Uh, Councilors, any other business? If yes, Councilor Buck. If I might just point Please. out to my colleagues on, up here on the, at the council desks that there is a ribbon, a commemorative ribbon for hunger and homelessness awareness that we heard about in the proclamation earlier this evening. I'd invite you to wear it proudly and uh, in support of those folks in, in the most need in Sioux Falls. So that's there for you. Councilor Buck, thank you. Would anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. And it has been seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Sioux Falls, make it a great, great night. Yep.